Hi everyone, welcome back to Pack Your Nursing Minutes. In this video, I will discuss the common IV and PO opioids that are used after surgery in the recovery room and the common ones that are prescribed at discharge. If you have been enjoying my videos, I just call you to act and subscribe. Now let's get to it. The next drug we're going to talk about is Dilaudid. So Dilaudid um, has a fast onset five minutes. It peaks in 10 to 20 minutes. This acts on the mu opioids uh, receptors. It's an opioid agonist. The duration is three to four hours and it's longer acting than fentanyl. So its indication is for moderate to severe pain in the opioid tolerant patient. And it is our second line post-op pain drug. Usually fentanyl is the first line for severe pain. And then Dilaudid is the next where we want to give something that's a little longer acting uh, to help saturate those opioid receptors and get their pain under control. It does come with respiratory depression, apnea, post-op nausea and vomiting. Um, again, it acts on the mu receptors just like fentanyl does. So you're going to have the similar side effects. Equivalence of dilaudid, one and a half milligrams is equal to 100 mics of fentanyl, uh, or 10 milligrams of IV morphine, or 75 milligrams of Demerol. Uh, dilaudid is contraindicated in your allergy patients, your obstetrics, your asthmatics, and if you have any COPD, it can cause hypercapnia. You also don't want to give this if they have a paralytic ileus. It can cause increase in intracranial pressure related to the hypercapnia, so you don't want to use it in that patient population, your neuro cases, and it can cause hypotension or, and or orthostatic hypotension. Now the next drug I'm going to talk about is Demerol, and Demerol, another name for that is Meperidine. It has an onset anywhere from 2 to 11 minutes a duration anywhere from three to five hours, so longer than dilaudid. And if they have liver disease, that can extend out all the way to seven to 11 hours. And this works on the kappa opioid receptors. And it is primarily used to treat post-op shivering. We don't really use Demerol anymore for pain management because it gets metabolized in the liver into a byproduct called normomeperidine. And normomeperidine can cause CNS excitation or seizures. So you definitely don't want to use it in your neuro patient population because of that property. And you don't want to use it in your liver failure patient population as well. It works on the kappa receptors. It works really great for rigors. It, what it does is it decreases the set point in the hypothalamus so that, let's say if they're shivering at 36.5, you give a dose and now that new set point will be like 36 and they will stop shivering. So it's very effective, very profound for treating rigors. Now the next drug I want to talk about is IV morphine. So morphine is our oldest opiate out there. It was discovered in 1805 from the poppy seed. In 1941, it was approved by the FDA. It has an onset from 5 to 10 minutes. Peak is 15 to 30 minutes and duration is 3 to 4 hours. So it works on the mu and the kappa opioid receptors. And it is indicated for chronic to moderate and severe pain for short-term management and long-term use, it can lead to dependence. Common side effects are respiratory depression, post-op nausea and vomiting and sedation. So you always wanna have your patients with all of these opioids on pulse oxes, you're doing your respiratory assessments. And I'm not gonna go into all the assessments today, we're just talking about the drugs today. And if you want to learn more about pain assessments, you can go back in my pain series videos and find the video on assessments. Now I want to talk about oral opioids because this is what we're going to transition our patients to from IV dose. And this is also what the doctor is going to prescribe for them post-op. So our least potent is hydrocodone. And then the next stronger drug is Percocet or oxycodone. And then the strongest of the oral medications is oxycontin. So let's begin with hydrocodone. So hydrocodone, you'll see it prescribed as 5-APAP. That APAP is an abbreviation for Tylenol. So hydrocodone, 
has Tylenol in it. And you need to be aware of that because your patients are getting Tylenol and you need to make sure they go, don't go over the daily max dose. So the onset for this pill is 30 to 60 minutes. It peaks in 60 to 90 minutes and its duration is four to six hours. Again, it acts on the opioid receptors, the mu, the delta, and the kappa receptors. It is FDA approved for moderate to severe post-op pain. Common side effects are respiratory depression, sedation, constipation, and post-discharge nausea and vomiting. Equivalence, five milligrams of hydrocodone, one tablet every four hours is equivalent to a patient getting 15 milligrams of IV morphine a day, or a patient getting dilated. 2.2 milligrams IV a day. Now, the next drug I wanna talk about is oxycodone. So oxycodone has an onset within 30 to 60 minutes. It peaks in 60 to 90 minutes, and it lasts anywhere from three to four hours. It is an opioid agonist working on the mu and kappa receptors. It is FDA approved for acute and chronic pain and moderate to severe pain when other modalities are insufficient. Remember, oxycodone is stronger than hydrocodone. Side effects that are common is post-discharge nausea and vomiting because it works on the CTZ zone, uh, constipation, puritis, sedation. You don't want to give it to anyone who has an ileus or uh, liver toxicity because um, this drug also has Tylenol in it if you have Percocet prescribed. So Percocet is oxycodone with Tylenol. And again, you need to be teaching and educating your patients about their daily Tylenol maximum dose um, when you discharge them. So equivalents, hydrocodone, uh, a seven and a half milligram, one tablet every four hours would be equal to oxy 5, 325, one tablet every four hours, or to 20 milligrams of IV morphine a day, or three milligrams of IV dilated a day. Lastly, we need to talk about Narcan. Um, we can't have a presentation on opioids without talking about the reversal drug, which is Narcan. And actually, in Washington state, the state I live in, there was legislation passed to every patient who gets an opioid prescription needs to have a Narcan prescription so that we can address the opioid crisis in the country so that when people get into trouble, they can help their loved ones at home when they identify that overdose. So Narcan is the drug of choice to reverse opioid saturation, receptor saturation. It is a pure opioid antagonist and it works very quickly. IV dose is one to two minutes. Um, it peaks in five to 15 minutes and it has a duration anywhere from one hour to four hours. It is indicated for opioid overdose, unresponsiveness related to opioids, respiratory depression related to opioids. Side effects are rebound pain surge, hypertension, tachycardia, uh, use caution in your cardiac patients. If you have to give Narcan in the, in the hospital setting, the patient needs to go into an extended recovery for four hours because the Narcan can wear off while the opioid is still in their system and it can cause rebound sedation. So just gonna throw that out there, be aware of your hospital's policy and procedures if Narcan is given. And usually if Narcan is given, it's not a common thing that we do, but I have seen it done in the recovery room. And it also requires further investigation because it's not normal practice. And so we wanna find out what indicated, you know, what happened with that patient that they needed to have this intervention so we can avoid it in future patient populations. So that wraps up. Um, opioid and surgery and the common drugs that we give after surgery and my perspective. So if you felt like you got value added from this video, please like and subscribe and share it with your friends and colleagues and drop me a comment. I really would love to hear from you and find out what you're doing in your hospital. Thanks as always for tuning in to PACU Nursing Minutes. I'm Nurse Kathy.